Uh oh. G'day and welcome to Black Opal Direct. My name's Justin. Well, welcome to another round of me battling Opal. This piece today is a magnificent piece from Andamooka. Um, the uh, seller, I think, sold it to me as a piece of Cooper Pedy, but I do think it's Andamooka. It's just got all of the traits that is more conducive to be Andamooka than it is to be Cooper Pedy. So I'm pretty much going to call this an Andamooka stone because. Uh, I believe it's that's where it's from. Now, there is some pretty cool traits about this piece that makes it very special. It has two very distinct layers. Now, one layer... I tried here to explain myself properly about this stone and I turned it into one big garbling mess. So what I'm really trying to say is that this piece has two color bars going on an angle and I need to make sure I orientate this gem so that it faces properly. The color won't show and you'll have to turn it on an angle. So that's a really important thing for me to do is to make sure that I've orientated it properly. Now, I know it's 35 carats, but I really think I'm gonna go for an eight, minimum eight carat oval on one side. Now there's lots of sand on the edges here um, on one side that I have to work on first. So I'm gonna take that out on the wheel and then measure, I've got a little bit potch as well, but measure out where the best stone will sit. And then I can make a slice and slice the, uh, the piece in two and hopefully go for one beautiful gem. Now I paid $5,000 for this stone and um, it has the potential, if it cuts an eight to 10 carat gem with the color I can see, I can see double money in it. And being a crystal opal and not a black opal, there's a little less risk involved. And the reason why is because I can see inside it much easier than a black opal. If I grab my gem torch and I shine it into the stone, you can see it glows, it glows everywhere. So it's a really good sign that stone inside should be pretty clear. Now, all I'm gonna be concentrating on is where the best color is. Um, so that's my main objective for this stone. By the way, these gem torches are now available on our website. Go and check it out, blackopaldirect.com, and I'll leave the link in the description. So I'm gonna work on this piece on the wheel just, um, just to clean it up and see where my stone could sit. All right, let's get the wheel going. Just going to start by taking that cloud off the top. Hopefully, it comes off. It looks like it's coming off, but I might have to leave it a little bit in there. Before I slice it, then I can roll it over with the dome. But uh, let's see what happens with this sand on the other side. My goal is to get my stone in here, so I just need that to be clean. like pretty amazing color there so I'm pretty happy with that um, there should be should be something decent this little white area here I'm hoping will roll out uh, once I slice it so I think I'm gonna slice it I'm just gonna take it a bit further down around this area and see how much of that white cloud comes out As you can see the white cloud goes down a fair bit on this edge now that's called cotton wool. If it's, a, if it's from Andamooka, we call that cotton wool. Cotton in white opal can be really deceptive. It can look like it's just on the surface, but make its way very deep into a stone. And the reason you can't tell is because it's just as translucent as the white opal itself. Right, so now that area 
is cleaning up. That is really quite pretty colour. So I'm quite excited about what we've got potentially as a nice stone. Let's have a closer look under the, the light box. The white cloud in this piece is going to make me hesitant about where to slice it. So I'm going to have to make the right decision when I go to slice. But even though it's white or crystal opal, you still don't know whether you're going to get a clean stone because these colour bars are hard to follow. So we've had a good study of the stone and really two colour bars are mixed, mixed a bit here and there's a little bit of stuff going on. But I am thinking that maybe the stone's going to be a little bit bigger than I thought. So I'm going to slice it off around about there and go for a much bigger possibility of a stone. And if it does, then that makes a totally big difference again because there's not many awesome big crystals around like that. So let's make a mark and see if we can get this right. So I'm thinking just pretty much, pretty much a slice through there. That's, that's about it. So then I can really work on, I was gonna, I was going to bring it back to about there, but looking at the colour, I think maybe there, and then I can work on one big, nice, big gem there, rolling over that dome, and hopefully getting a really nice gem. That would be the plan, the ultimate goal. All right, so this is the big bit. I've got to slice this end off, and then we will see what we've got. Slicer, here we come. Slicing opal is a real finite part of the process. When you slice it, there is no going back. Once you've done the cut, you go with it. You'll notice here that I do a slight readjustment on my cutting line. Um, I just think I made a little bit of a mistake by a couple of millimetres. And um, you'll notice when I start to grind, I stop and I go, oh, ah, did I do the right thing there? And I actually changed the, not the, ang the uh, spot, but the actual direction of where the blade's going through. So not quite on the line I drew, um, just a little bit off just to try and save myself a few more carrots. I'm starting to think that this is going to be a white opal rather than a crystal opal. We've sliced it off and we can see that there's quite a nice colour bar in there but I don't think that's as strong as the colour bar just above it but anyway we're going to work on getting the rolling these edges out and getting our stone right there so let's hope we get a decent gem out of it it's really important to study an andamuka crystal piece because of these color bars they can mold into each other and look like one color bar when in fact there could be two or three different colour bars and when you cut into the stone you're actually thinking you're in one colour bar and you're possibly in another. Very confusing and you need to look very closely at what you're doing all the time. <laughs> I understood that mumbo jumbo, did you? So that sand spot really causing me a little bit of havoc there. I really wish it would be out already. And this cloud here, I don't know if you can see it very well on the camera, but there's a cloud right there that really needs to be gone. It really does. In order for this to be an evenly spread, beautiful patterned stone, it needs to be out. And all the time I'm trying to orientate this stone so that it's showing its best colour from the top because if it doesn't then it doesn't have as good a value so to 
hard one, this one. Come on! I go through these battles every day that I cut opal or have battles with opal. Never ending. So that's that's about it. She's going to be about probably eight, nine carats, I'd say. Um, the roll, you can see the roll is just on the top there. So I'm, I've orientated it as well as I can without losing the colour. So it's not that bad. It's not not bad at all. Really pretty colour of green, gold, blue, red. A little bit of everything in there, which I'm very happy about. So let's work on the other piece and see what happens um, on the other piece. So I'm going to slice that through the middle, get a nice high dome stain sitting there and whatever I can out of that side. Two seconds later I'm back with a slice, you can see it was there and now we're just going to work on a nice little high dome stain here. crystal and another probably another smaller one here to so get that sand spot off the top And a little cushion cut. So we've got three stones all up. That's pretty good. I'm really proud of how far we've come. From humble beginnings as opal cutters for other dealers to where we are today. With their own studio, a team of the most wonderful people I could ask for.
and a network of the most dedicated and true followers that anyone could ever want. You. Without you, I'm just a guy cutting a rock in a shed. What I'm trying to say is, I appreciate each and every one of you for coming along for the journey and sticking with me even when I fall. Because you know what? When I fall, you fall too. And when I fall, I learn, and you do too. Which is where it all really counts. So I just wanted to say thank you for sticking with me through thick and thin and helping us as a community become a voice for our favorite gemstone. Yes, I've been told I wear my heart on my sleeve. Oh well. So back to where it matters, cutting this beautiful gem. So I'm cutting this piece dry because I found with the gem light that I had a few little inclusions left and it's very hard to see those inclusions when the opal is wet. So by cutting it dry just to begin with, and by the way, wear a mask when you do this, we don't want silicosis, you must make sure that all the sand spots are out first before we get the stone wet again. So this is the easiest way I know. Well, it turns out that what I thought was going to be crystal opals are white opals. Only the small little cushion cut would I consider a crystal opal since it's translucent enough. But anyway, nevertheless, they're beautiful stones. I enjoyed the journey and I hope you did too.